Hi, I'm hydroponics farmer Joe from Green Art Planet, and I'm here to teach you how to set up the small deep water culture hydroponics growing system. Just to review, here's your four liter reservoir, which we've already filled with nutrient solution. You can see the water level here by looking at the little clear window in front. Here's your planting tray with the holes to put your planting pods and baskets in, which we'll get to in just a minute. You have a pump submerged in the water, which will circulate your nutrient solution and will also help aerate it. And here we have your light canopy with some controls on top where you can both turn the lamp on and off and also choose which wavelengths are best for where your plants are in their growing cycle, either actively growing or actively flowering and fruiting. What's cool about this particular hydroponic system is that it allows you to germinate seeds directly in the system rather than doing it elsewhere and then having to transplant. So to get going with that, you'll want to open your bag that has plastic planting baskets so that you can have these ready. And you'll also want to open the bag that has the planting pods, which is what you plant your seeds in. These are plastic baskets and the plugs that go in it. As you can see, on the wide end of the plug is a little hole. That's what you're going to put your seeds in. Now, you don't have to use all 12 holes. Some plants are larger than others. So the kind of plant you're planting will determine if you use all 12 planting holes or not. For example, if you want to grow cherry tomatoes in this unit, I'd only plant four pods per unit and I'd space them in the four corners like this. That way the tomato plants grow and they'll have plenty of room. You don't want your plants to have to compete for light or room to grow. However, if I am planting lettuce or herbs, then I'd plant all 12 holes and would trim and harvest my plants as they grow so they have plenty of room. Okay, then your first step after locating your planting baskets and pods is to locate your seeds. The baskets and pods will come packaged with your hydroponics system. However, your seeds and other hydroponics materials will be sent to your school separately by Green Our Planet. Check with your teacher co-leads to get a supply for your unit. Initially, we've selected a variety of vegetables and herbs that we know will do well in your hydroponic systems. However, part of the fun of growing plants hydroponically is to experiment and try new things. We've got a list we can give you of plants that do well in hydroponic systems, but feel free to experiment on your own in subsequent plantings. One tip here is that once you've picked out your seeds, we found that by taking all the seeds and laying them out neatly on a piece of white paper, the students can easily see them. All right, so let's start planting. First, you're going to take a planting plug and then you're going to dip it into some water or nutrient solution. The key is to get the plug nice and wet. Water, light, and warmth will trigger the embryos in your seeds to start germinating. So starting with wet plugs gives them a head start. You can wet your plug by dipping it either into the nutrient solution or your reservoir or into another source. Then you're going to place the wet plug in the planting basket. Eventually, the plant roots will grow down through these holes and into the nutrient solution. You're now going to take two or three seeds from a vegetable or herb that you've selected, and you're going to drop them into the hole at the top of the planting plug. Make sure that the seeds drop into the hole and are not stuck on the top. The reason we plant a couple of extra seeds is because often not all seeds will germinate. By adding a couple of extra seeds, you're increasing the chances that at least one of them germinating in your planting pod. Next, 
You're going to take your bag of basket labels and open that up. Take a label and put it so that it covers the top of the basket. Each label has a little opening at the top. The hole is there so that the plant seedling will grow to the light through the hole. The reason for using the labels is to cut down on the light hitting the wet planting pods, which reduces the amount of algae growing in your system. Basically, the labels are a great way to keep your systems free from algae and looking neat and clean. Another great little trick is that you can write the names of the plants you've planted directly on the labels. The next step is you're going to place the basket with a planting plug in it in one of the planting holes, making sure that the water is reaching the planting plug. Now, you may have wondered why some people love to use greenhouses. That's because plants, and especially seeds and seedlings, like moisture and warmth. For seeds to germinate, they need to be both moist and warm. To accomplish that, you'll now want to place one of these little clear cones on top of the planting basket. These function just like a greenhouse would, helping to raise the air's humidity and increase the warmth. Place one over the top of each plug and repeat this process until all the planting holes are full. You'll then end up with 12 tiny greenhouses. One thing that occasionally happens at this stage, because the plastic covers increase the humidity, is a white fungus might start to grow out of the planting plug and around your seedling. If it does, then it's best to remove the plug and its seedling and throw them away. Wash the planting basket with bleach and then put a new plug with seeds in to begin again. This doesn't happen very often, but it's good to be on the lookout in case it does. Now, if you're not going to use all of the planting holes in your system, say you're planting just four tomato plants, for example, then you'll want to place one of these black plastic covers over the empty holes. Whenever possible, we want to keep light from hitting water with nutrients, as otherwise, algae will grow. So by covering these open holes with plastic caps, we're stopping light from reaching the nutrient solution. Algae is common in both hydroponics and in freshwater fish tanks. It isn't particularly harmful. However, it can be annoying because it makes your system more difficult to clean. So remember, the more you keep light away from your nutrient solution, the better. If you don't write the type of seeds that you're planting on the labels on your planting plugs, then you also have the option to use these little plastic labels. You can just write on the label what plant you have just planted, like kale, and then place the tag in one of the tiny holes located next to the planting holes. I recommend using a dry erase marker so you can reuse these plastic labels. After all of your seeds are planted, what they now need is light. So let's look at the controls on the top of the light canopy. You have four basic controls, power, fan water, vegetable growing mode, and flower fruit growing mode. The different options on the control panel allows you to dial in the perfect lighting conditions for the type of plant you are growing. Plus, Turn the entire system or the fan and water pump on or off. You want to make sure to select the correct mode because vegetables and fruit and flowers all have different growing needs. For your purposes, we recommend your system is set to vegetable mode since you will be mostly growing vegetables or herbs. In vegetable mode, the lamp is on for 16 hours and off for eight hours. So now that you've planted all your seeds, just remember to always keep your reservoir full of nutrient solution. Preferably with four liters, but if not, you'll want to at least keep three liters in it at all times. 
This will ensure that your plants have enough nutrient solution and that the pump will always be covered with water and functioning properly. One way to know whether your water level is too low is that the pump will sound really loud, much louder than if it's submerged in water. That means you'll be able to hear it. So if you have too little water, the pump will start to suck in air and will burn out and stop working. Without a pump, your plants won't grow as well. Also, the larger your plants get, the more water they suck up and transpire. So as your plants grow, you'll need to add nutrient solution more frequently. So definitely check the little clear window on the front of your unit to keep track of your water level in order to avoid burning out your pump. Refilling your reservoir with nutrient solution is also a great way to keep the students engaged with the hydroponic system. Not only will they have to check on it regularly by checking the water level, but it will also show them how to mix nutrient solution. This is done by simply mixing five milliliters of your concentrated nutrient solution with every one liter of water. Once they do that, they can simply slide the cap out on the fill port here in the corner and pour in the replacement nutrient solution like so. Then slide the cap back to cover the hole. One last tip is that if for any reason your plants are not doing well, you might try emptying the reservoir and adding fresh nutrient solution, which is easy to do. There's a small drain plug in the back of the system that you can use to remove any old solution, or you can also use the siphon that's supplied by Green Our Planet to remove old solution and add new. Some growers replace their nutrient solution every month or so, but the best gauge is to simply see how your plants are doing. If they look great, then the nutrient solution is obviously doing what it's supposed to do. When it's all said and done, learning to set up and run a hydroponic system is far easier to do than learning how to grow plants in the soil outside. That's because with an indoor hydroponic system, you can control all the elements, light, water, temperature, and nutrients. The great thing is, once you've planted seeds, and harvested your first crops, then all you have to do is repeat the same process over and over again. It's that easy. I'm hydroponics farmer Joe from Green Our Planet. Happy planting!